How's it going guys? Today we're checking out Dehancer Pro. So I've been editing video for almost a decade now, starting in middle school, teaching myself Final Cut Pro. And even now, there isn't a week that goes by without me opening up Final Cut Pro. I've always appreciated very good colors and sort of that film look that can really take your cinematography to the next level by making the colors just pop. The biggest jump really in my career was transitioning from a DSLR camera to a cinema camera that can shoot log, which nowadays most mirrorless photography cameras can also shoot log. But when I first got my C70 and I started shooting in log and just seeing how much data I had to work with both in exposure and also just the depth of color, I was really blown away. So with my current workflow, I've found a few LUTs that work pretty good and I'll usually just slap that on and adjust exposure and call it good. But I've always been longing for a little bit more. Now film emulation can get very complicated very fast. And I've tried a few different plugins for emulating that film grain, but I haven't really been super pleased with any of them. And they're also super taxing on my computer just trying to render that. And none of them have been quite right because there's so many factors that go into film emulation because there's so many variables that are different from digital video capturing and true film celluloid film capturing. So a few months ago when I was really diving deep into vintage lenses and sort of emulating an older style of film, which is sort of the highest level of film still replicates most of the traditional celluloid properties, I learned about the plugin Dehancer and saw a quick run through and was very impressed. So when Dehancer reached out to me to collaborate on this channel, I knew this was going to be good. And from using this plugin, it has made me fall in love with film editing again. I've realized after using Final Cut for so many years, I sort of lost that initial spark when I was first learning how to do things and just the wonder of this brand new software to me at the time. You know, that kind of died out after I learned all the basics and even some more complicated things. And it's sort of just more, this is the program, and I just come here to cut some film. From learning how to use Dehancer, which is also available in Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut, as well as Photoshop and Lightroom and those types of things, I truly have found a new desire to color grade and film emulate as much footage as I can now. It is just so impressive how much control this plugin has over your footage, and it's very easy to use. Before I walk you through the process, if you're interested in picking up a copy of Dehancer, you can use the promo code S9Films at checkout to save 10%, and it also helps out the channel. All right, over on the computer now, we've got Dehancer downloaded from the website, which is a very easy download and install. There's been some plugins I've used before where it's Pretty complicated with finding the correct folder in the user once you restart Final Cut Pro or whatever program you're working in and fire it up. There are some profiles that it has to download. I've got quick internet here. It took probably less than 30 seconds to download all of these profiles. And now that we've got that downloaded, we're ready to dehance. All right, so I got this clip already in our timeline here. We're gonna go over to Effects and then Film Emulation. And here we have Dehancer Pro version seven. They are rapidly releasing new updates to this. So currently version seven is the newest. I think there actually is a beta that is um, also available, but I'm using the uh, fully released version, not the beta yet. So we're gonna drag this onto our clip right here. Um, one thing that uh, you should note, Final Cut oftentimes will automatically apply a LUT. So this is using C-Log2. So oftentimes this will do just the default C-Log2 LUT. Now there's not really one correct way to do this process. Everybody can do it slightly different. And that's the great thing about this program being so flexible and having so much versatility is you can do different things. So I suppose you could um, apply your LUT that's already been made for your camera and then just tweak some of the settings inside of Dehancer. Um, but that is not what I do because I wanna have full control and the LUT is already making some decisions that I probably would want to be making. So back in the information tab, we're going to turn the camera LUT to none. So we're starting with just the log image. All right, so here we have the input source. Now it's gonna to default to Rec 709, but we're going to choose the camera to get our most precise uh, information. So this is going to be a Canon C70 
is the option. Uh, as you see, they have a fair number of different options to choose from, and they are releasing uh, different camera profiles all the time. Now we did shoot this in C-Log2, which is what I would recommend, but you can also do C-Log3 with these other options for a more compressed version. Now, right away you have exposure compensation. If you uh, were drastically under or overexposed, you can start manipulating this right here. I've got my Lumiscopes set up over here to take a look at that, but uh, so far we're pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it uh, just a slight touch above right there. Uh, in terms of our color temperature, you can manipulate that right here. These are just your rough sort of corrections before you get to the actual film emulation. Same with your tint right here. I think our tint is pretty good. Then you got your defringe and your defringe radius right here. All right, so now we're on to the film portion where you can actually choose your film stock. And you've got all of these to choose from. There is a significant amount. You could spend a lot of time going through each of these. Um, they look really really impressive and there's so many different varieties so if you're trying if you have a specific film profile that you're looking to mimic um you can you know just start with this right here and it'll get you to where you want to go so we're gonna go with the uh kodak vision 3 200t now this is your push slash pull um normally i'll leave this kind of right back at zero here now we'll open up the film developer tab. Now this is emulating the actual process with celluloid when you take the film into the different chemicals and do that whole process. Um, these are some of the different things that can be manipulated with your digital film. In order to see the changes that you're doing, you're gonna wanna first click enable, and then here's our contrast boost. As you see, we're bumping up the contrast, and then you take a look at our lumoscopes over here, um, basically stretching out that this is an even more flat version than our standard log right there. And we want just a little bit more of a contrasty look. Now the gamma correction is an even more extreme version of the exposure change, which you normally only see in raw photos. Um, but this is you know, a, a more complex feature of exposure change that you have in this film developer window. And we got your color separation here, which is slightly desaturating the film, but it's separating the colors. I normally leave this at a hundred. And then the color boost is different from saturation, but it's along the same lines. It's essentially making all the colors more vibrant and pop, which is a great function of true film where the colors just pop in a different way than what you normally see with standard digital video. So I like bumping this color boost up just a little bit here. If you want to compress your film, you've got all of these tools right here to assist with the film compression. And then in the expand window, we've got our black point, changing where that black value is sitting at. If you want to really bring it up, uh, typically leave it more right over zero. And then the same thing with your white point. So this would be way overexposed. Um, typically, true film uh, is much lower in terms of the peak white values than true video, such as most videos that you see on YouTube, typically the whites will be almost to 100, or um, oftentimes in TV, what they say is illegal white would be like basically clipping over 100. Um, that basically never looks good, but um, in film, it is everything is just a little bit darker. Your peak whites are not true full 100% white brightness. All right, so we've done our film input. That's what our camera is that we shot with and all that information. We've done the developing of taking it through the chemicals, and now we're going to print. And Kodak 2383 is the most common film print out there, even today. And as you can tell here, this is changing what the actual image looks like a fair amount just by choosing this. You've got quite a few options to choose from, but now is where you get even more complex tools that truly is the film emulation that we all have come here for. All right, so for our target white, this is basically just taking the most white highlight areas. And when you bring it down, it's going to be decreasing their 
brightness and actually retaining more color. As you see, some of these white bokeh, full minus two target white is really bringing back the color that is lost because they're some of the brightest parts of the image. You've also got your full exposure control here, bringing everything down, which if you take a look at this, this is some pretty impressive latitude, even more sort of detail in this raw, or this actually isn't even raw. If you shot in raw, um, you'd have even more control, which the C70 can shoot raw and now raw light. But even in my slightly more compressed recording, C-Log 2, you have got an impressive amount of data here. So we can bring this down just a little bit. I like how moody this looks when it's a little bit darker here. You can also manipulate the contrast here if you want it really, really contrasty. Um, I think just a slight bump up in that contrast is going to look good. And your color density, which again, this is similar to saturation, but it's really making the colors just pop similar to how real film pops the colors. And then you actually have the real saturation right here, black and white, if you want to take it all the way down here. Otherwise, true 100% would just be the full color that we're working with. If you want to manipulate the color head, now these are broad oversweeping changes to the actual color. So here, this one is going to take everything a little bit more yellow if we enable it. More yellow, more blue. As you see, that's manipulating basically the entire image here. Same with magenta and green. I'm going to leave all of these at zero. And now we get to the film grain, which is oftentimes the most recognizable piece of film emulation that most people are trying to copy. But as you see, there's so many other pieces. Um, but choosing the film grain really is a significant piece of a true movie. So you've got some preset options for just, you know, typical 35 millimeter at ISO of 250 or ISO 500. That's just kind of, it's going to take care of this work for you and recommend what it believes, which is pretty good. I zoomed in here so you can get a better look at all of this grain. But here, this is going to be a size of one. And this is size 48, which is the max here. 10 is probably going to be pretty good, pretty typical. And then the amount here, we're starting with 35. This is amount zero. So this will be kind of just the image itself with no grain. And then this is 100 is their max. And as you can see, that is unrealistic amounts of grain. Bring that back down to somewhere around 35 is somewhat typical standard grain. So now we have the film resolution, which you can actually change the sharpness of the image through this because as I'm sure you know, recording digitally, you can record 4K, 6K, 8K, and even higher, and you're getting very, very sharp images, which is gives you a nice clinical look, but it's not as inviting and warm and cinematic as true film, which true film has, you know, in some regards, an infinite amount of resolution because it's all organic on the celluloid. Um, but, you know, it's not as sharp as what, you know, a 12K image might look like because it just has these different textures. So if your film is shot with maybe a lower budget lens that doesn't have any character and is very sharp, uh, you can use this film resolution. Bring down the film resolution to kind of just soften your image just a little bit without really making it blurry. You're just lessening some of that intense sharpness. Then you've got control for the shadows, midtones, and highlights of the actual grain. Back when I was trying to do my own film grain emulation, not even all of this, just purely trying to find that grain, um, did not have any control over any of these pieces. And you've got your chroma right here. Um, some of the earlier days of me trying to emulate grain would literally just use a still image to get that sort of grain look, um, which is not at all how true film is. Um, as you move through the frames here, the film grain itself is going to change. Now you can change the actual film type. So negative is 
basically what your camera records. And then once you go to print, then you get the positive version, which this is a little bit more of a traditional, what you see as the finished project. And then they've got these two modes for analog and digital, which digital is experimental. And this is a little bit of a wild look. I'm gonna go back to analog because that's what we're trying to recreate. Moving on to halation now, Back in my days of trying to just create grain, I didn't even really recognize what halation is. Uh, halation basically is around the highlights, adding somewhat of a red-ish haze around the highlights is what you find in halation. Now we're going to enable that halation. Turning on the mask mode, we actually don't have any. This shot doesn't have really any super bright areas, but turning on the mask mode here, you can see the halation is coming out of these hot spots. We're gonna turn the mask off, and as you can see, these are the areas. This is a way too extreme of halation, just to show you, demonstrate this. So we're going to bring down some of these effects, just an ever so slight red glow off of these highlights, which this is the actual coding, how this program is created. This is a fairly complex manipulation. All of these are very complex manipulations. They spent a long time working on this. Now you also have Bloom. We're gonna enable Bloom. Bloom is allowing your highlights to just sort of blur ever so slightly, uh, which we can even go into custom of this and bump up some of that. Bring that back down to a more standard blooming amount. And then they also have film damage, which I thought was interesting. Um, basically when you enable this, it will add kind of like speckles that dance around in the film. And this is emulating film damage. Um, personally, I, while I like um, the grunginess, I don't necessarily do film damage unless you are really going for a very historical sort of more early stages of film look. Um, but most of the film processing nowadays doesn't necessarily have much damage. So I'm just going to leave film damage off. Also got your film breath right here, which you can take into a custom mode. You also have gate weave, which as you see here is cropping in just a slight amount on the image. And gate weave is the mechanical effect of the film being pulled through the projector and moving around just a little bit, which is kind of a pretty cool effect. So then finally here, we've got the overscan, which is also a pretty sort of common film emulation go-to, I guess, especially on social media. As you see, it's uh, once we enabled it, it is cropping and you actually see the true film on the sides here. You can adjust this so um, scale of 100, it's completely out. Scale of zero, we're bringing in that film on the sides here. Bumping up that exposure, this is where the actual film will be grabbed onto on the reel to pull it through. Um, so if you really wanted, you can even flip it here. If you really wanted it to truly look like film, uh, bumping up the exposure here, like you're looking at film <laughs> this is kind of this is kind of a cool cool effect most people probably aren't going to use this because this is a little bit more of a i guess it's more flashy kind of a film emulation look uh definitely there's a, a use for it but um most people are going more for the high quality image that just has some of these nice characteristics of film emulation so we're going to turn over scan off Finally, our vignette here. Vignette is pretty common with just sort of darkening our outside of the image. Uh, we don't want too much, but we'll take just a little bit of vignetting on the outside here. Vignetting oftentimes will come from the actual lens because the center part of the lens is generally the brightest. And then depending on the lens, uh, as you get off to the edges, um, it'll get slightly darker and also slightly more blurry or you'll get more character in the edges. On our output, you can change the total impact. So this is where we started. This is where we ended. And then another cool feature is you can make your own LUT. So you go through this whole process, you tweak 
all of the pieces that you want. You come right here to the LUT generator. You can make your own LUT, even change it to the different sizes, you know? So what I imagine most people would use this for is once you make your custom LUT, uh, you can bring that over to like your small HD monitor or really any monitor that allows you to put your own custom LUT in there. And so you can look at the footage live while you're filming with the exact custom LUT that you designed that you are planning to use in post. Now, I don't imagine most people will be using this LUT generator to not use Dehancer because um, first off, there's so many fine tuning adjustments in every shot that you're probably gonna want to choose. You're gonna take this Dehancer onto every single clip. You could probably, um, for all the clips in the scene that are relatively the same, um, you could go through one, copy those to the other ones, and then adjust them slightly. But you're not gonna get the same, you know, effects as you would with truly using Dehancer if you were just using the LUT. So very cool feature to use probably for monitoring. And then finally at the bottom, you've got your license info and then checking profiles and disabling everything if you want to. Now the price for Dehancer is a little bit more on the expensive side, especially if you're just starting out trying to make your footage look the best you can. Um, they do have shorter three, six, one year month options, as well as the full lifetime you pay once membership. But you know, especially if you're working in professional film or even if you're a serious hobbyist, um, people charge a lot of money to do color grading, color correction, film emulation like this. People pay thousands of dollars just to do a few minutes of film, especially for a short 30 second commercial, people could pay several thousand dollars, even tens of thousands of dollars for the highest level of color correction, color grading, and film emulation. So looking at it from that perspective, for how much control you have, um, this is really a very affordable option versus paying somebody thousands of dollars to do this for you when you can easily do it yourself. That's going to wrap it up on this video, briefly diving into the magical world of Dehancer. Once again, if you'd like to save 10%, so you can get a three month, six month, one year, or lifetime membership and never have to pay for a subscription again, all 10% off with the promo code SNIFILMS at checkout. That's going to wrap it up for now. Thank you all for watching, and as always, don't forget to keep it pro.